Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about an extraordinary, all but unknown orchestral work of the classical period. It's by our good friend, Haydn. And, you know, one of the things about Haydn is that you never know what you're going to get. But whatever you get is going to be interesting. Now, we've been so busy doing the Haydn Symphony Crusade that we haven't exactly had much time for other stuff. And I know there's more that we need to talk about. We need to talk about the masses and the oratorios and the piano trios and the string quartets. I mean, I've done talks on, on bits of these things, but nothing systematic like the symphonies. But this piece I really, really want to talk about because... It's just fabulous, well, like most Haydn, but it's completely unknown, and it's so unique and special. There isn't anything else like it in the classical period. It is his 24 minuets. What, you say? 24 minuets? Yes, he wrote a dance suite called 24 Minuets. Nobody is exactly sure when he wrote it. Um, it probably was after he returned from London in the late 1790s because of the scoring and the maturity of the, of the musical writing and dating and whatnot, and the manuscripts and all that stuff. It was completely unknown till the mid 20th century when H.C. Robbins Landon found it and published it finally for the first time. It is not actual dance music that was danced. You know, Haydn wrote a lot of that. He wrote tons of dance music for Prince Esterhazy's balls. 99% of it is lost because people didn't save it. It was used at the party and they threw it away. The same was true of Mozart's dance music, of which a lot more survives, and Beethoven's early dance music as well. All of that music was real dance music. That is, it was used. It was used at the parties, but these minuets cannot be danced which makes the mystery surrounding them all the more fascinating. They are written for the standard dance orchestra of the period, which sometimes included some extra instruments. One of the dances, and we'll listen to it, actually has Turkish percussion in its trio section, for example. But Haydn's minuets, as we've talked about in the Haydn Symphony Crusade, seldom follow the strict pattern of the dance-type minuet, which is it moves in in strictly regulated eight-bar phrases in a very moderate tempo. Haydn almost never does that. He does 10 bars, he does 12, he adds two or three or four to the end of the phrase, and that's what he does in these 24 minuets. Evidently, and from uh, you, the evidence is just of the work itself, since you can't dance to it, and since it's late Haydn, and since it probably was never performed in his lifetime, or it may have been, it seems from all of the available evidence and logic and common sense that this was a cycle that lasts about 57 minutes of 24 minuets that were supposed to be played as a cycle all at once. And it is thus the, the ancestor because it's concert music. You're supposed to sit and listen. You're not supposed to be up jumping around. It is the ancestor of things like the Dvorak Slavonic dances, the Brahms Hungarian dances, all the later romantic dance things that people did. And not all of these pieces, even though they're called 24 minuets, are actually minuets because some of the trio sections are prototypical Lendler, that is waltzes, and German dances. There are other dance types sort of worked into them. And so they represent, in a sense, the apotheosis of the the aristocratic dance styles of the period. And they're absolutely unique in that respect. I, there are no other um, works this comprehensive and this colorful and this varied and this much fun to listen to devoted to the minuet, of which Haydn wrote absolutely hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So he knew minuets as well as anybody ever did know minuets. So I want to play you some samples. Now, there have only been two recordings of this work, only two, which again, amazes me, just amazes me. I mean, it could just be so popular and so much fun to play on the radio, and you don't have to do all of it if you don't want to. It's, it's amazing. But the first one was Antal Dorati's on Decca. And then along came, thank God, this one on CPO with the Capella Istropolitana under Peter Gutt, or Guth, if you want to pronounce it that way, G-U-T-H, leading evidently from his violin. 
wonderful performance. Now, each of these pieces, they last anywhere from about, the shortest is about a minute and 45 seconds long, and the longest ones are a bit more than three minutes long. So, again, if the minuet had eight bars, then eight bars, then eight bars in strict form, how could you possibly get something that lasts twice the length of the previous one? even if you allowed for slight variations in tempo. And actually, there's some fairly wide variations in tempo here. So again, this is concert music. And there is simply, it's unique of its kind. And we're lucky that it survived because so much of this music was thrown away. At least the manuscript survived. So we have the actual music. That is the copyist manuscript, Elsler's manuscript, I think, was the one that survived. But the bottom line is, you know, it's it's indescribable. It is what it is. It's the apotheosis of classical period dance music stylized for concert listening. And it's just, oh, so wonderful. And every so often in Haydn, you come across these, these little miracles. And this is without question a little miracle. But let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. First, as I mentioned, you're not going to find that these are all the same length. Therefore, they can't all be danced the same way if you were going to dance them. Let's listen to a bit of the, the A section without repeats. I'm not going to spend all the time playing them all continuously. We will, we will listen to a couple. But first, the A section of number seven, which is the shortest one in the cycle. It lasts about 20 seconds. That's all it is. Here is the, oh, it's so charming. Oh my God, how delightful. Just listen to this. Really, really just, it's Haydn, right? It's just tuneful and rhythmically chirpy and memorable. But now let's listen to the exact same section, the A section of the next minuet, number eight, which is a, more than three minutes long. This is exactly double the length of the A section we just heard, and it's scored for a much larger ensemble with trumpets and drums and whatnot. So let's listen to that section. <laughs> Get it? I mean, it's it's almost a different kind of work, and so as you can hear, Haydn is is the 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 emphasis, as always with Haydn, is on contrast. It's on variety. It's on demonstrating everything that you can do with this very very limited limited form. It, it it's almost Bach like in its sort of pedagogical thoroughness. You know, it's sort of like the art of fugue for the minuet. It's the art of the minuet if you want to call it that. But as I said, not all of these minuets are strictly minuets all the way through. Um, they use other kind of dance forms. And here is a delightful trio section. Um, it's the trio section from number two, which is a landler. It's like a waltz. It's sort of like merry-go-round music or barrel organ music, you know, or German um pa pa um pa pa that sort of thing. Here is the trio section. Thank you. 
So that was number two. I think that was number two. Yes, it was number two. You know, isn't, don't you just like wonder why no one has ever played these things and why they don't get recorded more frequently? I think it's really, and people think, oh my God, 24 minuets is going to be so boring. My goodness. But it's Haydn, Haydn. It's never boring. Never, ever, ever. So let's listen to the one. Number 19 is the one here. It has the Turkish percussion in the trio section, in the minor key, by the way, which makes it even more interesting. And again, you know, you're not going to usually dance to music in minor keys, about which more, anon. But first, let's listen to the whole thing. Number 19, it's like a, it's like a couple minutes, and it's just delicious, absolutely delicious. See what I mean? Don't you just love it? And then finally, we're going to listen to the only minuet in the whole series in a minor key. It's number 22 in the D minor, and it's a very minor key. It really is. And the trio section is also, remember the merry-go-round, you know, um, papa? Well, this couldn't be more different. <laughs> this is as, as different as you could possibly be and still be by the same composer for the trio section. And that's what makes these things so wonderful to listen to, even though there are 24 of them and they take about an hour to get through. They're just, each one is a little, little gem. Absolutely. I mean, Haydn's invention was just inexhaustible when it came to this stuff. So here is number 22 in D minor.
passionate, romantic even, isn't it? Isn't it just wonderful? I, I, I just can't get enough of this stuff. I really can't. And so I, I just want to tell you about them. I mean, the Dorati recording is long unavailable. You may be able to find it. It actually was released separately at one point. Um, and unfortunately, you know, Dorati's Haydn is sort of vanished at the moment. Maybe it will pop up again someday. Um, I, I expect maybe Decca will release a 5,000 disc Dorati box and it will be in there. In the meantime, get this CPO recording, which is available. And it's, it's essential, absolutely essential stuff. Play it for your friends. Ask them what it is. <laughs> They'll never guess. It's, it's just an amazing thing. That was the Capella Istropolitana, Peter Gutt or Guth or however you want to pronounce him. And technically, by the way, if you look at the title here, you'll see these are, you know, the Minuetti Hoboken number no. nine, which is dance music, number 16, which means the 16th item in the dance music bit of Anthony von Hoboken's Haydn catalog. But normally, they are simply called 24 minuets, which is what they are here on the, on the uh, spine of the disc. It's a much easier way to figure it out. Or just look, look it up under the names of the performers, because, you know, who knows how you're going to find these things. Isn't it, you know, why make it easy? I mean, why make it easy? Why can't we just call them Haydn's 24 minuets and leave it at that? Because we can't. This is classical music. We have to make you sweat in order to get the good stuff. But my job is to remove some of the perspiration, you know, and hopefully this helped. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.